Uh, hi, I'm Mark from Biofuel Watch. So, uh, when I first heard that biomass was a climate solution, I didn't question it at all. Why would I, when the climate narrative is peppered with phrases like keep it in the ground, or no more fossil fuels, or 100% renewable energy? And Drax Power Station in East Yorkshire has seized on this opportunity. It has now completed its conversion to become the world's largest biomass burner. It is cozied up with government, academics, businesses, and in some cases NGOs, in presenting itself as an essential role in the climate solution and in the transition to true renewable energy. But forest biomass is not green in the slightest. Burning wood is worse for the climate than coal over any time period meaningful to meeting the Paris Agreement obligations. It releases a pulse of carbon into the atmosphere that cannot be recovered for decades to centuries, if at all. It involves the destruction and clear felling of forests on a vast scale, at the very time we need to be protecting and restoring these essential ecosystems. It's complete madness. Worse, the main sourcing region for biomass burn in the UK is a United Nations biodiversity hotspot in the southeastern US. A biodiversity hotspot is a place where the wildlife is completely unique, and the southeastern US is no different. It is home to black bears, Venus flytraps, and salamanders. It is vital to surrounding communities for flood protection, fresh water, and recreation. And it is a place that, like all others, we need to protect and respect if we are to have any chance of reversing the ecological crisis that is also unfolding before our eyes. The southeastern US is global ground zero for wood pellet production, where logs of wood are turned into wood pellets. Here, acres of forest are clear-cut every day and replaced by short-growing, managed, monoculture pine plantations, which hold far less biodiversity and cannot provide the same benefits to the nearby communities. And perhaps of little surprise, the communities facing a wave of new wood pellet mills are predominantly poorer rural communities and communities of colour, places where it's harder for communities to object and to raise concern. Residents there are subjected to constant noise from logging trucks and increasing respiratory issues due to pollution from the pellet mills. They are given barely any chance to object to their forests being cut down and their neighborhoods being turned into industrial sites. And where is all this biomass going? It's being shipped 4,000 kilometers to be burned in the UK, primarily in Drax power station. The truth is Drax's biomass burning is just a symptom of a wider model. It is a way for Drax to continue its exploitation of resources it has no right over and ripping them from communities without their right to say no. This is what we mean by extractivism. It deliberately seeks out areas where communities are less able to fight back due to class, race, or access to capital and starts a new round of exploitation. But Drax also fuels climate injustice at home. Burning wood produces a host of particulates that can cause cancer, heart disease, and respiratory issues, all into the air that nearby communities breathe. These dust particles increased 135% since Drax started burning biomass. A combination of the pollutants emitted from Drax are estimated to cause 590 premature deaths a year. But many people living near Drax rely on it for their employment, and they shouldn't have to be choosing between their health and their income. And who is paying for this environmental injustice? We are. For the 14.4 million tonnes of wood that Drax burned last year, it received two million pounds a day in subsidies from each of our energy bills. It's reliant on these subsidies to survive and to keep its extractive model alive. The only way we can have a chance of avoiding over 1.5 degrees warming is by protecting and restoring our forests and rapidly transitioning to genuine renewable energy such as wind, wave and solar power. This would create hundreds of thousands of jobs in home insulation, renewable energy, and ecosystem restoration. It must be done in a way that is post-extractive and doesn't allow mining companies to open up new resource frontiers in the global south. Drax's plans to continue burning are simply incompatible with this vision. We see through its greenwashing. That's why we are calling on the government to scrap subsidies for biomass and to refuse any subsidies for Drax's gas and coal burning. For forest communities and the climate, Drax has to go, and so must the toxic and unjust environmental and extractivist mindset that it embodies. Thank you very much.